I view all of these projects that I've been involved with as on a kind of similar path. Starts with an idea of something that I want to see in the world and then try to find people who have an alignment of interests with, with myself and my colleagues and then just try to put it together. Hey guys, Nathan Chan here. Welcome back to another founder interview. Today we speak with Joe Einhorn. Now, this guy is insane. If you want to know how to create the next Amazon and how he is, like insane. He's built extremely successful startups. We're going to talk about his latest company called Loot, which is killing it right now. If you guys want to know how to build something of true worth and significance during COVID and his take on what it takes, you have to watch this. All right, if you are enjoying these episodes, please do give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment below. Now let's jump in. Joe, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Sure. Oh, uh, wow. Uh, the first question that I ask everyone that comes on is, uh, how did you get your job, aka, how did you find yourself doing the work you're doing today? Um, so I'm 39. I'm turning 40 pretty soon. Uh, I've been doing startups for almost 24 years. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. When I was 16 years old, actually, uh, was when I got my first uh, official startup job. I became the first employee, like a self-taught engineer in the in the mid 1990s, um, for what uh, became a sort of like a, a web-based Bloomberg competitor called Capital IQ, and uh, it was a it was a really interesting time to be involved in startups and and the internet and technology because uh, so much of it hadn't been fully baked yet. So anyway, long history of doing startups and ultimately to answer your question uh, about how did I end up with the job I have today is sort of a career of doing startups for, you know, well over 20 years now. And um, I always had this dream when I was a kid to uh, be involved in the comic book world and the comic book space. And uh, as I became a parent uh, myself, uh, I, I, I saw this need to bring some type of family activity to the table that uh, could diversify a family's entertainment from screens, iPads and computers and TV and all that stuff, video games. And so um, it's just one of these things, you know, I've, I talked to throughout my life, I talked to different entrepreneurs and founders. And um, I remember talking to somebody who I really admire along the way and asking him like, why do we do this stuff? Like, why do we do startups? And he said that we have an idea of the way we want things in the world to be or how, how we want them to look or what we want to see in the world. And we just try to make them, make them happen. So long story short is it's a combination of having an interest in comic books and the arts and a, a career in startups that sort of led me to this place where, where we are today, which is Loot, my comic book shop for kids in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, I love it. So cool. I'm a big fan of comic books. I uh, really like uh, the Marvels and also I'm a sucker for Riverdale. Never got into the comics, but love the TV show. It's funny that you mentioned Riverdale. Uh, that has a sort of uh, an important part in my story, which is the first comic book that I ever actually got my mom got me was Archie. And, you know, I'm a kind of person who was like, you know, learning how to read from comic books and things like that. And so it's been really fascinating to see the evolution of comics in into entertainment. And I know I know Riverdale is a really terrific show. And if you look at these shows that they're putting out now uh, related to these characters from comic, I mean, it's 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 incredible. They're, they're so creative and so unique. There's um, you know, there's one on Disney Plus right now. I don't know if you've seen it over there, WandaVision. Oh, yeah, my brother uh, was recommending it highly. I haven't got into it yet. That one um, will really, I think, really blow your mind. And it actually stars a guy who's sort of a friend to our shop, which is Paul Bettany, who, who plays Vision in um, in the Marvel franchise, and uh, who, who's also like a Brooklyn native. And that show is really out of this world. But Riverdale is also phenomenal. Mm, interesting. So it's, I find it interesting, you're talking about loot, but you haven't talked about the fancy, which yep. like you're trying to build um, the next Amazon in many ways there. Like, like how did you talk, like how, how did that start? Like I'm really curious because like that's massive, man. 
Yeah, so so in total now in my career, I think uh, Loot is my fourth startup. And so all along the way, there was sort of the evolution of technology combined with the evolution of consumer behavior. So um, the first startup I was involved with is called Capital IQ. That's a web-based platform for financial professionals to do, do better work. And so that's a, a big project involving data collection and data cleaning and uh, ultimately some CRM functionality. And, and it's sort of a, a research tool combined with um, like an action, actionable intelligence. And so the first thing that I was involved with was structuring unstructured data for financial professionals. And then after that, I, I did a company called Inform, which was a structuring unstructured data for media companies. And the idea was that uh, we did natural language processing. So when you would look at an article on uh, a site like CNN, we would link certain entities in the text, like um, names of politicians, like Barack Obama could be like linked up. And then when you were to click it, that would drive um, like an, a topical page around him. So it was like structuring unstructured data for finance and then structuring unstructured data for uh, news and media and information. And then the next one was with Fancy was around uh, e-commerce, sort of like, um, you know, so much of retail was moving online. What could we do that could make uh, the experience more, more native to digital? But, but still capture some of the magic from traditional retail. And that's actually, you know, uh, something because I, I, I listen to and watch a lot of founder uh, content. And um, one thing I wanted to mention is that there's like a sort of like a common thread, which is um, when I listen to the different amazing people that you guys have on the show, is sort of um, the magic that comes with these with these projects, right? And so it's, it sort of manifests itself in different ways, right? To take an experience that is so so simple and organic from real life and translate that into something on digital, like making it making an interesting type of retail and commerce. There, you know, the end experience ultimately there's some magic there, and then it kind of takes on a life of its own. And what I would say about loot is that um, when this is the first thing that I've been involved with, and remember, this is very low tech, right? Uh, this is the first thing that I've been involved with when, you know, I just walk in the door, turn on the lights, and it's got the magic, right? And so I know that um, like everyone who's trying to do their own thing, myself included, you're always like searching for the magic. And uh, I think it starts with the just the, the core concept, uh, which is like you have some bit, whether it's high tech and something cool in e-commerce like you're talking about, or it's really low tech and it's just a, the reverse, like a physical retail experience, right? It's sort of like um, what's the sort of what's the what's the spirit of what you're trying to do, and um, how does that how does that come out in your in, in your work. So in many ways, all these projects that I've been involved with are fairly similar, right? There's like this creative spark, whether it could be something as potentially mundane as financial information, but doing something radical with it to, you know, well, structuring data for media companies. But if you think about the end user and how people might consume information and become smarter, that's something to, coming up with a different way for people to shop online and then ultimately to try to do something disruptive for uh, young people. There's this thing going on with entertainment, digital entertainment for, for youngsters, which is, um, it's incredible, but it's also um, very different than our childhood. I don't know, you're not quite as old as I am, but um, the, the, the point being that if you have this concept and it's something that is real and true to you, you can sort of bring it together with whatever resources you have. And that's all that ever happened with any of these startups. And I've noticed it, you know, when I look at your community, like sometimes 
just like a simple example will be, I'll go into your, your guys' Instagram page and um, I'll see like, I always like to like look in the comments to see like what, what, what are people actually doing? Cause like, you know, there's like all these great influential people who talk and that, or who, who share. And then there's like, well, what did the people actually do with it? And just like a really simple thing I would say, cause I was, I was looking at it uh, earlier this week is like, sometimes the only thing that people have is their point of view. And so you can, using free tools that are available on the internet, like you may not be in a position to open up a store right now. Uh, actually, it's a really interesting time because, because of COVID, commercial real estate is actually um, distressed. And you, know, you may be able to bring an idea. There, there's a new concept of who your partner could be. Your partner doesn't necessarily have to be a venture capital firm. Maybe your partner could be a person who owns a building or who owns a space that needs um, needs help and, and wants to do something for the community. But in the case of founder, if where, what I go on, what I saw was like, there's people who just say like, Hey, um, when you come and look at my page, right. Whether it was actually, um, on Instagram or they were saying like, go to Instagram and go link in, in their bio to go to their YouTube or whatever it was. And they were doing stuff like curating, not just like startup stuff, but like, um, lifestyle stuff, like, um, this is like, there, were, there was like art curators on there who were just saying, and, and they didn't have a website, they didn't have an app, they just had their point of view. And, but they're in the mentality of um, trying to make stuff happen that sort of goes with your guy's brand. And so I think that that's, so I think that's really interesting. Whereas when I joined this movement of startups 24 years ago, the platforms and the tools were so important. And now, everyone has access to platforms and tools to some degree. And certainly there's people who are changing the game and making platforms and tools that I never even thought could exist before. And that, and that's incredible. But now it seems like the differentiator in a lot of these cases is, well, what's your point of view? Like what, um, what are you bringing to the table? And, and a lot of that manifests itself in terms of like, well, who's popular in these different genres of media? And uh, again, because I have kids and because I'm very interested in this field, I pay a lot of attention to the entertainment related to gaming. And um, there's, there's, there are these amazing games, which I could have never imagined existed. And there are these people who are so talented at the games. Uh, before I go any further, do you play any video games by any chance? Oh, I used to be hardcore gamer. Used to play Counter Strike. Um, used to play now. Are you, probably the most recent game was Fortnite with my brother a lot, but not so much anymore. Yeah, actually, I was hoping you would say that. So what 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 happened with Fortnite, which is really interesting, is that um, there's all these there's all these dimensions to it, right? Like um, with young people, they they meet. A, this is before COVID. Young people would meet up after school on Fortnite. You get together, you might do a tournament together. You, you, you collaborate, you coordinate ultimately to help each other. They feel like they're helping each other. Sometimes you'll carry somebody through the whole game. But what I noticed in terms of like Fortnite players, right, is sometimes you, you could have people who are really good at this or really good at that. But I don't know if you remember when you were playing it, when people are very good at building, right, all of a sudden, you have people who are building in one second, they could build a four story tower. And not only are they you know, making a shield for themselves, but they're moving up and down. And um, it's happening at a, at a speed that's like, it's uncanny, it's unbelievable. I don't know if you remember that. Now people are just, in, yeah, it's so, crazy. Um, you watch this, I guess you're out of it. And it's probably good you're out of it because it's taken a lot away from your productivity probably. But I, when I look at the talent that is emerging from this field, right? Sure, there's people who have incredible stats, who like win every tournament. Some are just like really good at building, like I was saying. But a lot of times it's um, it's their personality and their point of view that is uh, bringing them to this level of kind of like relatability and fame and ultimately influence. And it's, it's been amazing to see what they do with it. I, I, there were so many people that I learned about through my kids who are so talented in so many ways and basically 
kind of ch game changers, you know, um, these people like Mr. Beast. Like, I was just uh, about to say, like, what about Mr. Beast? Yeah. Right. Like, so, um, and in terms of entrepreneurship, like, I looked at something that he did recently, which was this puzzle um, tournament that he did, which was like, he released a new digital puzzle and uh, he made a contest, which was like, first, as soon as you complete the puzzle, take a photo with it, complete. First one to complete it is, um, wins $100,000, $100, something crazy, right? And somebody won, right? And then you like try to reverse engineer the math on it. And it was like, wait a minute, his his audience is this many people. I think the puzzle was like 20, 30 bucks. And it, he might have netted, you know, several million dollars on the, on the puzzle tournament. And he seems to be really uh, thoughtful about what he does uh, with this with this incredible platform that he's made. So like big picture, what I'm saying, and the main thing that I wanted to kind of bring up is that the only thing that we all have and that's unique to all of us is our perspective and our point of view. And the greatest news for all of us is that we're finally at a time in civilization that there are so many different resources available to you to get your point of view across that if you focus on what matters to you and you stay loyal to that idea, you can start something up with ultimately with minimal, potentially minimal financial resources, but quite a bit of effort and personal invest, you know, what we always talked about like sweat equity, you know what I mean? So yeah, one project, you know, all these projects that I've been involved with have always definitely satisfied a curiosity for me. And I always said like, man, it would be cool if this was that. It would be cool if you could make another Amazon or if you could make news more informative and sort of not only informative, but potentially unbiased and factual and things like that. That was like sort of the idea with that. And definitely um, with at the time when we were doing finance, this type of like organized um, data collection and those kind of projects were, were really revolutionary in themselves. You know, I view all of these projects that I've been involved with as on a kind of similar path, on a similar kind of plane, which is starts with an idea of something that I want to see in the world and then try to figure out, try to find people who have an alignment of interests with, with myself and my colleagues, and then um, just try to put it together. Mm -hmm. Some interesting takeaways there from me. Um, I love that you call them projects. Yep. I think that's a really interesting distinction because oftentimes, yep. yeah, if you think of it as a project, it really is just like a fun experiment kind of, it's not a business, like it is a business, but yeah, I, I've always thought of these kind of things as projects too, but a lot of people don't describe it that way, which is really cool. Right. Um, but in saying that, like trying to create the next Amazon, like a, like a platform, like right. that is that is no small feat. Um, right. Like any any like social platform um, is very 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 difficult. Um, right. I'm curious, like uh, why why create loot when like that would have be, must be taking up majority of your time. Yeah. So I'm fully um, for the last two years. I'm fully doing loot. I'm not working at any other companies. And the reason why is I'm at a point in my life where um, this particular project, remember pre-COVID, I thought that it was important to uh, bring something like this into the world because um, as much as I love the, those entertainment mediums we were talking about, I saw how disruptive it was to um, just psychologically to young people, not just uh, my own family, but just because I'm around so many young people, our, all, of our, all of our friends. And so what's happened because of COVID is that these trends have really accelerated. And um, I'll, I'll give you like a simple example. So typical young person in the, here in the States, at some point in their early, I would say, between age five to 10 years old, they get their device, right? You know, I'm talking about just broadly, I'm not talking about necessarily rich people, I'm talking about anybody, right? And so they get this tablet and what their families start to 
invest into the tablet. So it's like for Christmas and for all these other moments, they are gifted experiences inside the tablet. And so then you factor into the equation that different people live in different uh, situations where they might feel like their neighborhood isn't safe uh, to hang out outside and or to play outside and right. And then couple all that with this sort of like addictive mechanics that are involved in these systems that we love, right? Not just the social platforms, but the games and frankly, everything that comes in these, in these platforms. And then when you throw all that in the mix in the pot with COVID where now they literally live on these devices, I feel that it was uh, more important than ever. So I guess because I started in the business when I was young and I spent a long time at each of these projects, I kind of get this feeling like uh, after 20 some odd years in the industry that it's now or never, you got to, you got to either do this thing that you want to do or not. And um, luckily I started this prior to COVID because um, when I started this company or this comic book shop for children, the, the whole premise was no digital, no website, no email address, nothing, right? And we, we got going and people kind of loved it where parents, moms and daughters and moms and sons would, would connect and relate over similar how you were talking about the, you know, your interests from your childhood all the way through to current entertainment. And it was working really, really well. And we expanded it to beyond just like a, like a lending library, a reading library, and a place to hang out. We expanded it to sort of an educational thing and uh, other other kind of experiences. And COVID hit right like pretty like you know in like less than a year from when we opened. COVID hit, and that was pretty shocking because our whole premise was out the window, um, which is no digital. Well, no digital. So, so let, let's forget the part about like, oh, what's going to happen if no one comes into my store, which is, I know that's devastating to a lot of people, but no digital means you can't reach these people that you were trying to impact, right? So as soon as COVID hit, I think like in, in one of the first few days, what we started doing, I have some really talented people who work here and we started doing uh, free online lessons, both live and on demand, um, that we would put up on Instagram on like IGTV because IGTV, you could do like an hour long thing. And so he would, one of our teachers was just doing the same script that he was doing in the shop, but now he was doing it online. And so we put up during the initial lockdown here, which was like a hundred days straight every day, including weekends, something new there. And then we, we moved into online classes and we have online programs that are going on right now. And we have in store as well. But all that to say that when you, in, in a way, I feel that um, it's more important than ever to, to try to follow through with this concept that was, that was always nagging at me. You know, some of my, my first company, I was there for uh, five to five, seven years, something like that. My second company, five years. The third one, I was there for over 10 years. And so we're in, we're, we're coming up on year two or we're, we're, we're in the second year of this thing. And I think there's like a, a long way to go in terms of adapting to the, the change in people's behavior, which it doesn't seem like it, it's ever gonna go back to what it was when we opened this place. Meaning like how comfortable are families just coming into an indoor space? So at some point in life, you're working on a project, something is reaching you and making you think about moving on to the next project and um, where do you want to impact people or wh where do you want to contribute to society before, before we're all gone. And for me, once, once I get going, I'm trying to be loyal to it and stick with it for as long as it takes for it to fully be realized. And, and so um, the, these kind of like moments in between projects are, they just happen pretty naturally. It's like, if something's been nagging at you for 20 years or since you were a kid and, um, you, and things fall into place where the location of my shop is on top of a restaurant that's owned by 
some people who I've known for like 20 years, incredible entrepreneurs. Like the guy was a chef at a very cool restaurant in uh, New York City. And next thing I know, he opened up a, a group of restaurants on his own with his partners. And um, they're so uh, important to people in the, in the whole city, not even just in this neighborhood. And so a chance meeting with him where he said that he liked the idea and he would be supportive to make this even happen, that we would even have a place to do this in, um, is what was like a spark that uh, allowed me to do this. And so it's sort of like the stars being aligned and then also just conviction. And um, I know that everybody, you know, has different means and resources at any given moment. But if you have conviction and you have a point of view, I think that it's a great time to get stuff off the ground and move on from whatever amazing productive project that you're in to the next level. Yeah, I love it. I love the, I love the take on point of view because I think it's so true. Um, we have to work towards wrapping up, but it sounds like you are very interested and see this creator economy and movement forming, um, as am I, as are we at Founder. So much to the point that I, I want us to start shining a light and spotlight on some of these creators like the Mr. Beasts of the world because it is fascinating what is going on right now. I am completely aligned with you here. And um, what we have been doing with Loot is when the kids started creating their own um, content here, we set up a marketplace so that um, kids could collaborate and ultimately sell their goods. So selling comics. Then we did this contest where um, the kids designed, this was like the perfect activity for COVID. The kids designed superheroes, their own characters. And then we actually worked with a phenomenal artist who actually made the um, action figures for them. And so this emerging era of the creator economy is absolutely mind-blowing to me and i actually think what you guys have been doing with founder in a way is you know to date pre whatever you're going to do with the mr beasts of the world which are necessary but just to date when you talk to old people like me right is we're all sort of the old creator economy which is we used what platforms were available to us and um just really importantly i wanted to remind you of like when i got started in technology my first company Things like um, Microsoft SQL Server and um, Oracle's database, things wouldn't, weren't working properly. And so I remember calling up Oracle or calling up Microsoft at three o'clock in the morning and saying like, hey, database replication doesn't work. And they would say, yeah, we know. If you figure it out, let us know. We'll, there's a bounty, we'll post it on. And so that was at a time when these platforms were emerging. Now that the platforms are so robust, it's absolutely all about uh, the creators. And I think that, you know, we're going to see there, there, there are some of these creators here that are so popular. You've already seen what they're doing, shaking up things like the stock market, right? Where people are saying like, Hey, we can, I, I've done some research and we can band together and we can have an impact on like global financial markets. Like that's, that's crazy, right? Some of these other characters, personalities and talents, people are talking about them as um, politicians. And I'll give you an example of one that really inspired me and caught my eye is uh, the guy from Barstool. Yeah, I was because, just about to say him. Yeah, Dave Portnoy. If you haven't had him on already, he's got to be on here because what he did with the Barstool Fund was so radical. He, he took what Mr. Beast and others are doing, and I think they all contributed to him because they saw what he was doing, and he took it to a whole other world. And so he's like a perfect example of, you know, everyone's different in terms of their like uh, personality and sort of like um, your sense of humor and everyone's different, of course, in their politics. But what did he do with his platform is he created this barstool fund. Last time I checked, over $30 million had been contributed. And every day he calls up small businesses and he says, what do you need? It's coming and we're going to help you. And that wasn't able to be done sort of like in our own government, right? And so the reason why I'm mentioning it is every day people talk about people like him as being somebody who could um, be in politics. And so all of a sudden the creator folks, it's like they're the most important entertainers. I mean, 
they're basically up there with LeBron James already, which is amazing that they have such an impact on young people and such an influence and often a really positive one. And then now we're talking about in the political sphere or in the finance sphere. So we're trying to do that with loot. You got to keep in mind that our constituents are um, really a lot younger, but I'll tell you this, the talent that I've seen in art and in writing and in sort of entrepreneurship here, I'm, I'm really certain that there will be creative talent from this younger generation that will exceed everything we've seen. They will disrupt Marvel. It won't be me, unfortunately, it won't be you. There's a kid in here recently, I tell, I tell this story like a lot because it blows my mind. And um, he was like talking about how much he, he loves loot because he is going to showcase his work here and he's going to become famous one day. He's going to be somebody in the industry. And I said to him, like, that's great. I hope so. But the reality is we're going to hitch a ride on your star because you're so talented and you're so creative and so you're so special that basically you're going to you're going to really change the, the world and we'll have been lucky to even know you. And that's sort of sort of like what we're seeing with the creator economy. It's really, I think, um, it's part of the inspiration why I'm so sure that I want to keep at this is to try to continue to develop talent like that. Yeah, no, that's amazing. And there's definitely a movement taking place that we are noticing as well, which, um, yeah, I hope we can be a part of fueling. Um, so look, Joe, super conscious of your time. We've already gone over. This is a great conversation. Really enjoyed chatting with you and connecting. Um, right, just bud. one last question. Any final words of wisdom that you'd like to share with our audience? Sure. It's probably the cheesiest thing. and I've heard it a million times, but uh, given everything going on in the world, the only thing that has resonated with me that actually worked is when the super famous entrepreneurs would tell me, never give up. Everyone always gives up because it's so hard and it's not like, it's not hard to, you know, express yourself and, and share your point of view. It's hard just getting through life. There's people who have health issues, mental issues, mental health issues, and um, people have real problems. And, and, I, and I understand that. And so if there's a way to hang on a little bit longer, then um, your chances of breaking through are, you know, going up exponentially the longer that you hang on. And I did, there, there, along the way, there was people who I, I would always ask them, like, how did you break through? Or like, how did your platform get so, so many users or whatever it was? And they said, like, you know what, at the beginning, there was nothing. It was, it was tough. Sometimes it takes two years before anything happens. And so I know that it sounds kind of cheesy to say, but I do believe that you got to try to never give up and um, you got to try to stay at it. And I think if you do that, then things, things, good things can happen to good people as well. Love it. Awesome, man. And where's the best place people can find out more about yourself and your work as well? Yeah, at this point, I would say on Instagram, the handle is loot, L-O-O-T. That links back to everything else. Um, otherwise, I'm founder. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time, man. I hope you have a fantastic day. Really appreciate it. Dude, thanks for taking the time out. Hey guys, hope you're loving our videos and that you're getting heaps of value from them. If you are, make sure to hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to join the Founder Fam. If you did enjoy this video and want to continue to master your skills, make sure you click here to access your free training now, where we'll go into way more depth with this founder.